Looks like I got a fuel leak on the old Metropolitan. Hey YouTube, Roy Marco with Roy Marco's Garage with my 1960 Metropolitan. We're going to take a look underneath and see what's happening with this fuel tank. It's got a leak. Uh, it was pretty bad. Like the bottom of the tank was kind of, you know, wavy and stuff like that. It didn't look very nice. So I was planning on putting a new fuel tank in this car. But uh, it sprung a leak in storage, so um, we're putting a new fuel tank in it. Now, these cars, you cannot buy a brand new fuel tank for it, which is kind of odd. I mean, I, maybe not a lot of them around, but it was, a, it was the same part from 1953 to 1962. But uh, they don't make it, so the only thing that's available are two things you can buy. You can send your tank off and have a reconditioned one sent back to you, which I'm not sure how they recondition them. And I don't really like fuel tanks reconditioned. The other option is uh, through a little bit of research, there's a company, I didn't buy it through them. <clears throat> what they do is they sell you a brand new fuel tank for MGA. An MGA tank, no sorry, MG Midget, sorry, MGA has a metal tank uh, tube on it, which I'll show you. An MG Midget fuel tank will fit in this car. Uh, it has the right sort of the filler neck here and all your uh, electrics will work. But I don't, they also sell a gas tank uh, strap kit and a few things, but uh, I figure I can make that. So you're going to come through the process of what it takes to put an MG Midget fuel tank in your Metropolitan so you can get a brand new fuel tank. So the first thing we're going to do is pull the fuel tank out of this car and compare everything on the floor and see what we got and see what kind of differences we have to make. Changes to straps and things like that. So we can at least drain the fuel that's in there. And uh, not a lot left. Okay, so we're just draining the fuel out of the uh, Metropolitan. There's a drain plug in the bottom. And uh, we just, uh, safety note is do not do this in an enclosed space. Make sure that you have lots of ventilation uh, fuel. Very easy to ignite. You can uh, ignite it with the static electricity from your fingers. So uh, just be cautious when you're working with fuel. You got four bolts that hold the fuel tank in on two straps, one bolt on each end. They're not like hooks. You see somebody painted this with something to make it look good, but this tank is not good. Obviously, you can see there's some holes happening here. Anyway, uh, what we want to do is we're going to undo the fuel line fitting. Let's do that. We'll get this uh, fuel tank out of here and get on the ground. So here's the fuel tank out of the car. You can see it's shaped a little different. But, um, we'll be able to see how the other one fits in there and try to make a comparison and see how usable it is. One of the things I have to do for sure is cut this filler neck off and I got a, an insulator that's fuel safe that will go so that the filler neck can still come out the body here and we got to make sure that's a good joint because uh, if it leaks fuel there it'll be leaking right into the trunk we don't want that. Also give you an idea what the floor looks like once you get the fuel tank out it's got a couple saddles here that have a curve into it which is uh, a little different the other tank is flat so we may have to put a pad or something figure something out but that's why I want to do this uh, so that if anybody has a Metropolitan and they want an option I want to be able to, to show you okay so as you can see this is the tank that came out of the Metropolitan and this is the uh, MG Midget tank that I'm going to put in they're dissimilar but they're similar all at the same time the pickup point is on the correct side it's a little different shape, the fuel sending in it works, and all of these things, uh, they're similar enough to, to, to work good. So the only thing like this has a, a pad on the top that will take off. Um, I'm not going to reuse this piece, I'm going to look for something to sort of create a padding on top of the tank to go up against the body. And um, I got a new fuel uh, sending unit so I don't have to worry about using the old one, which probably is not exactly the same. And so I went ahead and undid the screws. This has a pickup tube, which is still usable for somebody, so I'll hang on to that uh, with a fitting. That This one has a fitting that threads in the side of the tank. Also has a float here that looks like it's been uh, at least the, the arm or the float. 
might have been replaced. So this part might still work. So these are worth saving and, and adding off to somebody else who might need them for the Metropolitan. Uh, one thing I do need off this tank is this tube. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sawzall, cut that off as close to the tank as possible, and then I'll fit that tube to the new tank uh, when I get uh, to that part of the job. You don't really want to cut onto a fuel tank or use anything that will create sparks. Um, it would be nice to have a tube cutter this size. I'm going to use a sawzall because uh, I don't have to go very fast. I'm just going to cut this off carefully. Hopefully I'll make any sparks and blow myself up. If I do, it'll make for a good YouTube video. show you something uh, inside this tank. I'm going to cut this open to show you why you should never redo one of these fuel tanks. It just never works, okay? I cut open the fuel tank because I want to show you what I can see. It's hard to show you on film. People get these coat these tanks coated, and this is what happens, just comes off. Doesn't do nothing. Fuel gets underneath. You got a leak. Now you got this stuff clogging up your intake. Inlet tube. It's it's pointless getting your tank relined. It doesn't work. It's never worked. Every car I've ever owned that's old, it's never done it. So uh, I recommend a new fuel tank. Um, even though in this case it's not even going to be factory correct, at least I'm not going to have these kind of problems. So I recommend, if you can, please buy a new fuel tank. Don't waste your time getting it cleaned and lined. And this is now the second car that I've had where this has been done. And this is exactly what's happened. Now I can take this for scrap metal because the tank's cut open. And they don't have to worry about sparks or any problems. So, say la vie. These are the fuel tank straps. They're in good shape. I mean, they got a little bit of surface rust on them. But they're not rusted out. They're nice and strong still. I have to change the length of these straps somehow. I know that you want them in one piece. So I'm gonna see, I may make a cut overlap, do some button welds and stuff to shorten these up. Um, even just to get a length and then build some new ones out of one piece steel. So I'm gonna take a look at getting these in and what I gotta do. I gotta clean it up, there's some paper on here, there's some rust, I wanna clean up all this loose stuff when I work with these to get that new fuel tank fitted. I'm going to sweep the floor here because uh, when I work I don't need to lay all the dirty stuff is done and now we get the joy of putting a clean tank back in the car and let's get to it. Okay so here's the uh, here's the gas tank strap, fuel tank strap and the steel of this you know it's not rusted it's pretty good so I'm going to reuse it. What I did I had to shorten it so I just thought I'd show you this is the shortened one. It has a little bit of a different shape to it now I rebent it and all I did was I cut off, that would have been right there, that long. So I cut it right edge there, right off the edge there. I'm going to drill the hole right in the middle of this. And that will give me the length I need to install it. So I wanted to show a comparison of the original strap versus the one I had to, the modified strap to be able to get it back in there. I could remake these, but this uh, seems to be pretty good. I'm going to clean these up and paint them. And... Um, so I'm going to do this one exactly the same, clean off all the rust and see if it's good. Uh, take off this little rubber pad here that's been riveted on, that's what these two holes are for. Uh, drill the holes, get them both exactly the same, and then we'll uh, clean them up, paint them, and then we'll put them in, uh, get the tank in the car. Okay, so uh, 
I got the holes drilled in the end of the straps. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to test fit them. And then I'll do some more cleanup and paint them. So first thing we do is finger put that the front bolts in. Set the fuel tank in place. So now I know that with a little bit of tweaking, there we go. So that's the test fit stage. Once you tighten these bolts down, it'll suck these straps and that tank tight. So we got the fuel line to do, and of course the wire, um, which I want to do now with the tank down, but I want to get these straps done first so I can paint the straps, let them dry, fiddle with the other things, and then I can button it all together. Okay, just to show you what a pretty good fit this is, um, that little uh, spout comes through the floor here right in line with where the uh, old spout came through here and I'll be able to cut this to length now and get this to line up with that so I'll have to cut probably off I would say not so much cut length off of this as much as uh, kind of cut this at an angle but take one inch off but at an angle here and then um, course I got to weld up the hole that's in here and then this is a fuel safe insulator that you buy and uh, this is a fuel safe hose it, and you buy it by the inch this is like two dollars and fifty cents an inch and there's five inches here so I'll be able to put that on and then put that tube in there and be able to uh, put all that together and I also got um, these clamps here, they're stainless and they have a uh, special band inside so they don't cut the hose. Okay, I got the gas, uh, the fuel straps painted and I got two bolts installed uh, on the front part. Fuel tank is ready to go in, except for a couple of things. The fuel pickup, I'm going to use this steel line, put a bend in it, and I got some rubber line that will make the connection from this line to the uh, old line, which is okay. But I don't have to worry about putting that in yet. I can put the tank in and then deal with that. I have to install my rubber insulator because when this goes into the car, there's about that much of it underneath the floor. So I won't be able to do up the hose clamp and put that isolator on after the tank's installed on this side. So I'm going to do this side, tighten up that clamp, get that ready to install, go through the floor. And also, by tightening up the straps before I painted them, I was able to see on the body where it makes connection on the fuel tank. I got this, uh, basically it's a sound deadening insulation that's sticky. I'm going to cut a couple of uh, pieces and put on the fuel tank here where it connects to the body just to give it a little bit of a vibration pad and um, just to keep it from, let's say, wearing metal to metal and you can put a hole in the tank. Okay, so I got four pads here. It's sticky on one side. I just want to go... Put it there, come around, just take a little sharp edge here, just like that, four spots. It'll stay in place. Um, my gas tank straps are not like super tight, so this little bit of thickness, there should be enough room to take it, and it just gives that little bit of a, a pad for it. So now our fuel line is in place. I got it uh, mounted here. These wires, one is ground, will go to the uh, gas tank strap. The other one goes inside the car for the uh, fuel sender. I added a little of this uh, foil. It's uh, sound deadening, but sticky, uh, basically like Dynamat. I uh, put a uh, little edge on here so there's no sharp edge for the wire to get cut. We got our ground or our signal. I just have to put this on uh, before it goes in the car. Put that on. Seat it right down to the basement of that. Doesn't matter how I put it, but I do have to put it this way because the floor has a shape to it. 
and I want this uh, thicker part of the hose clamp to be underneath the floor. Okay. So that's in place. We'll now get this under the car and in, and then we'll do our filler neck, our fuel line hookup, and our wire. I also want to note on the other end of these, I put a big washer, the bolts go through. So now the fuel tank is in the car, and that fuel line there comes out. I'm going to actually take it out and I'm going to bend this in the upward direction so they're coming down. Cut this end off and just have a, a piece of uh, hose here. So as you can see, it uh, because the fuel line came to this side and it's got nothing to hold it, I wanted to have that mount there to hold that tank so when this is on there it's steady. And your wiring's coming out of here, the ground goes to the ground, the body and our sending signal goes up and through the floor. I'll make that connection inside the trunk. We got the fuel line in place and it goes up and then it connects to the old line. So straight there. The um, ground is on there. So all, everything's done underneath, the straps are on. And I put a little bit of that foil, uh, like that uh, sound deadening material on the strap as well. So when it connects up to the fuel tank, it just has a little bit of uh, something to wear against instead of metal on metal. So not bad. Uh, the tank install, I think, is good. The only tight spot might be is uh, your exhaust is now close to the uh, fuel tank and the shackles. So there's not much room there. So there's that. But uh, so far so good and it's a brand new fuel tank uh, in a Metropolitan instead of getting the old one uh, trying to get that fixed or serviced. So it's going to solve any fuel issues that it may have. So I, I'm happy to do this. Okay, all that's left is um, we got the hose attached coming through the floor. I'll pull up this rug. You can see it's almost center of the hole. It's good. And so that works. And uh, we'll have another clamp here, which we'll put on like that to kind of hide the, the end of it. I also want to point out on the cap, I cut a new uh, cork gasket for that so that um, it seals because before it didn't have it. Okay, so as you can see, I got the tube fitted. It has to stick out uh, about an inch past the um, body of that rubber because the cap has to be able to go on. Okay. I don't have a new rubber for here, but now if I get one, it'd be easy to replace. I just have to undo this instead of dropping the tank. So it comes in here now and goes into the rubber collar, and that clamp will go on. But I gotta weld up this hole and then um, paint this nice so that it looks nice when it's in the car. And that's what I'm gonna do next. As you can see, I got the hole welded up here. Uh, there's a little bit of a, I had to, I kind of made a plug and then I was hammering it in and it kind of dented the pipe there. So. It's not perfect, I wanted it to be, but that's okay. Pipe's not perfect anyway. And uh, I got it all cleaned up, sanded, and ready for paint. I went ahead and connected that wire over here for the, uh, for the fuel sending unit. So that's all done. Now the pipe's all painted. Jerko gray, holes welded up. I'm gonna put it in through this way. A bit of my scratching it. Oh, put the hose clamp on. There. 
Perfect. Alright, that's the install, and uh, there it is on the outside, caps on, the cork there, alright, there we go, new fuel tank installed, now we get to put some fuel in it. All right, so we're just going to head over to the gas station, put some fuel in it, and see if uh, we get the gas gauge to move. It's on empty. I only put like not even five dollars worth of gas in it, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so the car uh, has about twenty dollars worth of fuel in it now. All in all, so let's turn the key on, see if the fuel gauge comes up. Now well, comes up a little bit, so it's still. Not really working. Okay, well, anyway, that's kind of how it was before. It would come up to there and then work between the bottom and the E, so uh, the bottom quarter, so there's a good chance that the gauge isn't working. MG Midget fuel tank in a Nash Metropolitan. Uh, too bad they don't make a reproduction fuel tank for the Metropolitan. That's the way I would have went, but um, made the best do with what's available. And at least uh, that fuel tank fits pretty good and uh, it'll be okay. I think I don't think it'll be an issue. Uh, too bad the fuel gauge didn't quite uh, come back to where it should be, but it's uh, the same way it was before. The other fuel sending unit looked okay, so there's a good chance that yeah, it's probably the gauge. Um, the next thing to do this car, got electronic ignition to put in. And uh, other than that, we got to work on that Hudson. Um, the weather's starting to get a little better here now, so can do some work outside and I got an engine for that I want to show you and uh, anyway if you like these videos please ring that bell for notifications thanks for watching and please subscribe and have a great day